Sometimes we uh, never know the answers to the many things that we go through. Sometimes we try to do things by ourselves, don't we? And I think back to the many times that I've gone through many trials and tribulations. And as I was trying to fix them myself, it seemed as though they kept getting worse. But then I discovered that if I allow God to work through the situation and let me to pull back out of the situation and let Him be God, it seemed as though it never even happened. We never know the the answers to the questions that we have sometimes. But I'm so glad that there's a peace that passes understanding in those situations. Mm -hmm. For those who don't know, I was born in El Central, California. All the way on the other side of the country. At the age of three, we moved to a little town called Carlsbad, New Mexico. Anybody know where that's at? Mm -hmm. At the age of seven, my parents divorced. And at that time, my heart was broke. At, I thought it was my fault. I had no answers. At the age of eight, we moved to a little town called Calhoun, Georgia. Hmm. And that's where I reside now. But those who don't know how far it is from Carlsbad to Calhoun, Georgia, that's about 1,300 miles. And we traveled it straight. We didn't stop. We got in that night. It was about 12.30, 1 o'clock in the morning. Of course, my world's already rocked. I've left my home where I was raised and didn't know what was going to happen. And as we were coming to a porch and the door opened up, little did I know that the lady that was opening the door was going to be my nanny. Amen. About three years ago, the good Lord took her. She died of breast cancer. And I can remember many times that we sat at the table and so many memories we just sat and talked and she was like my rock. And from time to time, we wonder why they take them away, why they're gone. Well, I think back of the memories. And the very first day that I was in Georgia, that night before, when we were settling down and we were getting our rest, and she laid a pallet on the floor, and about 3 o'clock in the morning, a man come up and opened the door, and he's kind of being restless, and I said, do you live here? And at the time, he wasn't, he wasn't my papa, but now he's my papa. And he always reminds me every time I go to see him, he's like, do you remember that story the first time I met you? And I was like, yeah, I remember that story. Well, that night, Nanny told me, she said, I tell you what, you go, when you wake up, you go in that, uh, go in the cabinet, and you grab that cereal, and you get you some cereal, and you just have your good old time. So I took her up on that offer. I woke up and I grabbed a big old mixing bowl. <laughs> I grabbed the Cheerios, filled it up. Grabbed me a big old mixing spoon, reached in the refrigerator, filled that thing up as full as I could, took the first bite, and ugh, it was buttermilk. <laughs> uh, you know, for back west, all we got is cream of wheat and water. That's all we have. But it's those memories, those moments that we'll never forget. Mm -hmm. And I remember at one point in my life that I didn't feel loved. But when I met her, I felt loved. Yes. Yeah, it was an earthly love, but I felt loved. I felt accepted. But there's one who loves even greater than that. 
And that's the love of Jesus Christ. December 17, 1997, I gave my heart and my life to Jesus. If you would have met me before then, you would have said, Scott Marshall has no chance to go to heaven. He's going to bust hell wide open. But I met him that night. And he made this hard heart so soft. And I can never forget the day he changed my life. Can we do something different here tonight? I'd like to give an altar call. So just bow your heads with me tonight. We've sang. We gave praises. But there may be someone here tonight that doesn't even know who we sang about. Yeah, you've heard of him. But maybe, just maybe, you've never accepted the free gift of salvation that God has given us. We were in Ozark, Alabama singing at a night concert on a Friday night. At the end of the service, an 81-year-old lady came to the altar and she gave her life to Jesus Christ. See, folks, you're never too young and you're never too old to accept the free gift of what God has given us. Tonight, I'm going to ask you a question. We're not promised the next minute, the next hour, even the very next day. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Take a hold of this moment and search your heart out tonight. Ask yourself this simple question. If I were to leave this place, get in my car, and die, would you go to heaven? Ask yourself that question. Are you sure that you're sure? Do you know that you know that you know that if you were to leave this world tonight that you would go to heaven? If that's, if that's, if that's you, and you and you know for sure, I'm going to reverse it because I want to see who's the saints in the house. If you know that you're going to go to heaven, raise your hand tonight. Amen. All over the house. What a reassurance. You may raise your hands. What a reassurance. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. I want to ask God to do something different tonight. As we sing in the last couple of songs, wherever God leads us, I want you to continue to pray for the ones that you know personally that don't have a relationship with Jesus. See, folks, I believe that sometimes that God places people in our paths for a purpose. And sometimes it's just to pray for them. You may not know this person, but you know that you've got to pray for them. So think about those people as we sing these last few songs. This song is my testimony song. I hope it blesses your heart. It simply says, I bow on my knees. I cry to hold Of a city called glory, yes. so bright and so fair. As I enter the gates, I cry, Holy, the angel. I want to see G. 
Jesus Amen. The world who died for all I bow on my knees and cry holy I cry holy The gates of that city.